It is Tanner from cruisely.com. And today we are talking about something that is near and dear to my heart, how to sail for dirt cheap. Who doesn't want a good deal on a cruise? The truth is these days you can spend as much as you want to set sail. Between the suites and the fancy new ships and all the things to spend money on, once you're actually on board, it's easy to spend thousands of dollars on your vacation. But you don't have to. If you want, there are ways that you can sail drastically cheaper. With thousands of cruises sailing each year and thousands of cabins on each one of those ships, if you were smart and you follow the advice that I'm about to share, you can find cabins that can give you an entire cruise for less than the cost of a flight alone to most vacation spots. So let's get started. If you have ever looked for travel deals, you know that being flexible is by far the most important aspect of what you'll pay. After all, it is a lot cheaper to go to New Orleans when it's not during Mardi Gras or to Las Vegas sometime other than the Super Bowl. The exact same rule, it applies to cruises too. The mass market cruise lines, I'm talking things like Carnival and Royal Caribbean, they take on millions of passengers annually. In demand, it's highest when school is out. This is the time that families can set sail, leading to more people wanting to book. So times like summer or spring break and Christmas, you see the highest prices for the cruise. If you want to sail dirt cheap, be flexible and look for dates outside of those times. Specific months with the lowest fares, well, that includes January and February, as well as the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's when you'll find the cheapest deals. There are people that simply fall in love with one cruise line or they simply refuse to sail on a certain line. That can hurt your chances of finding dirt cheap cruises if you're one of those folks. When you want cheap, you've got to have all the options on the table. The truth is, after having sailed lots of different lines, I can tell you that yes, there are definite differences between them all. But in most cases, the experience is much more similar than it is actually different. After all, if one cruise line was just flat out bad, they wouldn't be in business very long. There's too much competition. On that note, I like to do my searching for dirt cheap trips on aggregator sites. That's where I start, places like Orbitz. They search all the lines at once and then allow you to filter by price. That way, it is much easier to search across all the lines for deals instead of going to a ton of different websites. Now, here's a tip to save a lot of time. For the vast majority of trips, the price that you find on one website, it will be the same you find anywhere else. There might be a few bucks difference occasionally, but it's not like a cruise is gonna be $500 per person on one site and $420 on another. So what does that mean for your search? It means you can actually search one site and be done. Now, something I like to do is what I just mentioned. I use a third party search site such as Orbitz to get an idea of what's out there. Once I find a cruise I like and I want to book, I usually go directly to the cruise line website. That way there's no middlemen. What I never bother with is going to just one site, then another, then another, and another, just to make sure I have the lowest price possible. It's simply a waste of time I found in most cases. Cruise lines, they've been in an arms race for more than a decade to bring out newer, bigger, and better ships. And sailings on those ships are generally priced higher than you'll find on the older vessels. For example, I priced a seven-day cruise aboard Symphony of the Seas for July 2022 from Miami. The price per person for an interior room is about $1,400. That means a couple traveling would pay about $2,800 to sail before port fees and gratuities are added on. But a similar trip, departing the same day from the exact same port aboard the older Royal Caribbean's Explorer of the Seas, it ran just about $750 per person. And that cruise, it was for eight days. So not only do you sail cheaper, but you also get an extra day on the ship. In other words, if you want to sail cheap, then your best bet is to stick with those older vessels. Since the older ships don't quite have the same buzz or the amenities as the new ships, they are priced lower to make sure that they still sail full. That can give you largely the same cruise, but for hundreds of dollars less than you'll pay on newer ships. If you are thinking about booking a dirt cheap cruise, then it's likely come to mind 
to wait until the last minute to book. After all, if a ship is about to sail and the room is empty, not only does the cruise line not make money on the fare, but they also, they're not gonna make money on from onboard spending for things like drinks and excursions and gambling. Now, the truth is, however, the last minute cruise deals, they aren't really a thing. Normally cruises sail completely full. During normal operations, the average cruise ship sails about 105 to 107% occupancy. That means every room has at least two people and there are some that have three people or more. Cruise lines, they are experts at making sure ships sail full. And in our experience, it's rare to see a drastically discounted rate right near the cruise date. As well, cruise lines, they don't wanna train passengers to wait until the last minute to book. Now, imagine if rates were always cut right near the cruise date. In that case, passengers, they'd simply wait to save money and sail cheap, create tons of headaches in trying to plan for a sailing. As well, it would mean less revenue for the cruise line. If you're wanting to sail for as cheap as possible, then it is all about booking a bare bones room. Even if you were wanting to sail more comfortably, such as with a balcony cabin, but not break the bank, you need to be careful about those upgrade offers that you'll see. Whenever you're booking, you'll be asked about all sorts of upgrades. The cost of these offers, they add up, but the amounts are small compared to the total cost of the cruise, so they may not seem like much. For instance, to move from an ocean view to a balcony cabin might be, say, 100 bucks. For some, it's well worth it, but remember that price is usually per person, so you can double the amount you'll pay right off the bat. As well, even within the same cabin class, there might be different prices for different decks or different locations on the ship. In short, if you want to sail dirt cheap, be careful of the upgrades. If you want to spend less money, it makes sense to buy something when it's on sale, right? In cruising, I've actually found it doesn't really matter. That's because the sales offered by cruise lines, they run constantly. Even if you see a big timer counting down until the end of a sale on the cruise line website, don't worry, another sale will replace the one that's ending. I've found that these sales don't really do much to the overall price. So for instance, one sale might be $300 off a second passenger while another is an across the board slash in rates but they seem to come out largely to the same price. And often you'll see the same sales offered over and over and over again. Now, one area that sales can help is with deposits. For example, Carnival, they occasionally offer $50 deposits, allowing you to reserve your cruise for less money down. But if you are waiting on sales to book your trip, then you might be surprised that the total price often doesn't change that much. When you're booking a cruise, you no doubt look at the headline price. We all do. However, that's just the start of what you'll pay. Before you are finished, you'll also have port fees and taxes. While these figures are disclosed, at first it's usually small print, very tiny print when the cruise fare is advertised in a much bigger font. It's later shown in an itemized breakdown before you pay, but you need to be aware of it. For most people, these charges are an afterthought, but if you wanna sail cheap, then they can make a big difference. For example, I found one eight day cruise on Carnival that has taxes, fees, and port expenses, about $115 per person. But other trips, including some that were much shorter, had expenses $164 per person. That's almost an extra $100 for a couple that's sailing together. So keep these port fees in mind when you're doing your search for cheap cruises. Now, if you've ever agonized over whether to book now or wait and hope the price drops, you aren't alone. It's natural to want to get the best price and it feels pretty lousy to book and then you see a lower price later. On that front, there is some good news with cruising. If you book early enough, you can often get your money back or receive onboard credit for the price difference. That's why if you find a price that you like and you're comfortable with, go ahead and book it now. Not only does booking early give you a chance to lock in a good price, but it will also give you the widest choice of cabins available. Waiting until later can mean fewer options. 
as well. The good news is cruise fares usually don't have wild swings like you find with airfare, but prices, they can change some. So when you book, you'll wanna check back occasionally, I'm talking once a week maybe, and see if the prices move. If it has, call up the cruise line and see what they can do for you to get you some money back. Now, I've shared the nine things to know about dirt cheap cruises, but I do have one more bonus tip for you. If you wanna sail dirt cheap, there's one more thing you should do. Let the cruise line pick your cabin. On many lines, during the booking process, you'll have the option of selecting a cabin at one price, but you're also offered a better deal by letting the cruise line select your room for you. This can save you a decent chunk of money, but the worry, of course, is that you'll be left with some crummy cabin right next to the elevator on the bottom deck. Now, it is possible for sure, but that's never been the case in my experience. In fact, one time I even ended up with an extended balcony cabin despite booking an interior room. So upgrades can happen. 